Okay, let's. Hopefully, this is all working, and I think I think the mic's picking up sound. Welcome back to Shining Force. Yes, yes, that's all fun. So in our last episode, we fought the first battle of Shining Force, which I managed to die in, despite the fact that it's literally the first battle, because, <laughs> you know, skills. <laughs> Simone here is uh, gonna help us open our save file, and we'll fight the second battle, because uh, our hometown was just attacked by Runefaust, there was an earthquake blocking our path back, and we have to travel through the tedious, tedious mountains to get there. We may need to egress from this battle at least once to level up a little as well. I don't think Gong was up above level one. So here we are again. It's not what I wanted to click. Ah, uh, the microphone is like slightly in front of my view here, so I can't see the, just the corner of the screen. The earthquake blocked the road, head north, but be ready for battle. Blah blah blah. They're all servants of a uh, Dark Soul, who I guess is in charge of Runefaust. But as you can see, we can't go through here because of the earthquake, so instead we have to travel to these mountains, which... Unfortunately, this battle is really boring, primarily because your movement is slowed in the mountains. So basically, it's just gonna take us forever to even get anywhere, and like, our guys are constantly gonna be getting in each other's way, like, because you can't control the order you go in. It, it goes in, like, the turn order I think is determined mostly by speed. So you can see here that Ken can't actually progress forward. But we can't skip his turn and like have him go after everyone else, that's not possible, so we're gonna spend a lot of turns just waiting. Um, and bafflingly, the enemies also kind of just run away. You, like, you saw that goblin just like leaves. Uh, so I don't know why. I don't know if it's programmed like that to prevent them from bottlenecking you, because that could easily happen at the start of the level here, where there's like a one tile area we need to go through, um, which would be really annoying. But then again, they could have just designed the map to not have the bottleneck. <laughs> so, it's, I, I don't really know <laughs> why did they draw it like that. They could have just made it a little wider and maybe not used these mountain tiles. I don't know. So we're just gonna have Hans get some pot shots here. I'll also say you, um, you can't change the order of your party, like where they're standing the map. It doesn't have like a, you know, battle prep section where you do that. I think the order is just determined by the order in the roster, which we're not going to be able to change until we get back to town. So for this battle, you're pretty much stuck with what you've got. So in this case, I have like a bunch of squishies at the front, and <laughs> and they're all just jammed up next to each other. It's <laughs> it's so <laughs> this game gets more interesting later. I swear, this battle is just not very fun. And it's like, because those enemies are walking towards you, it's like it takes you a billion turns to even get to the point where you can fight anyone. And then you just fight everyone at once and there's three guys left on the map. So this is an enormous map, most of which you just won't even go on. Because all the enemies will walk up to you, except for like three. So then you just have to go over to them. <laughs> so it's... It's not the best design battle. Hagong uh, still has not made any progress, he's just stuck back there. I know it's like, oh, you can move your other dudes backwards to get him out of there, but that that would just make the battle take even longer. Like, we need to progress here. The mountain tiles just cut your movement so, so much. It's it's bad. I think they may have a more severe effect on the mountain to units, because Ken seems to be going even less spaces than everyone else. Um, I don't actually know, though. The game... The game doesn't really explain any of that, sort of like, the, the mechanics are non-transparent. So it doesn't, you know, tell you that the classes have different properties or anything, but that would be my guess. Um, it's also true in Fire Emblem, so it just feels like it should be true, you know? But you can see he's not moving as many spaces as the others. Let's see... Oh, we should be able to kill this guy in one hit of Blaze. Gotta get Tao some levels, need more MP. Very good. She didn't get that much X from that. It's because she's already level 3, so... Uh, I guess he can just stand here because he can't go anywhere. Oh good, well at least Gong finally got to move two spaces forward. This battle is... And it's really hard to feed kills to the dudes that you want because it just takes so long for them to get anywhere. It's kind of fascinating too because this is the second battle of the game. This is the second battle 
and the map is pretty annoying so it's like it's impressive that you'd stick with it especially as a kid you know you don't have as much patience as a kid so i'm amazed that as a child i stuck this out and carried on to the third battle I guess it was like as a kid, you don't have as many other games competing for your attention, you know, it's like these are the games you have, so of course you're gonna play it all the way to the end, you don't have another one to play, whereas now as an adult, <laughs> if you don't, you know, if a game is, if the first couple levels of a game don't pull you in, you could just play something else. The first, honestly, it's, it's surprising because the first battle is actually, aside from the enemy balance being a little weird, like with the Dark Dwarfs being able to occasionally one-hit KO you, which is just, a, I think, a property of old games in general. Like, the game balance just wasn't something that had developed as much at the time. Seriously, I... Man, I gotta move the mic for the next recording session here because I thought it would be fine because it's just, like, barely in the corner. I need to move it over, like, an inch. It's not even that far that I need to move it, but it's covering up the, um, <laughs> the window on the screen that tells how many HP the enemy has left. <laughs> So it's like I'm stretching to see it. <sighs> Our main character here is quite tanky. He'll be fine. He took one damage. He's doing all right. <laughs> These goblins are not very tough. Um, uh, I think I'll have him start softening up the next one. He doesn't need to kill as much. It's like it's not that hard to level him up. He's really strong. Whereas some of our other guys are a little, <laughs> a little more frustrating to put into battle. And he's not going to take much damage from these guys, so... It's- I, I do like when games- like, you know, you're stuck with the main character in the- as- as in your party the entire game. You can't remove him. So I do like when games at least make them useful. So that it's not kind of irritating to not be able to swap them out. Can you swap them out, actually? I honestly don't remember. I'm- it's been so long, but you know, like in Fire Emblem, you know, you have to take them to every battle. So that if they're not very good, it's really frustrating because they're taking up a deployment slot. But our main character here is pretty strong. He's also the only one with egress, so he's quite useful in that way as well. A little trivia for you here. I think Luke should be able to kill this guy. Um, in all of the, the Shining Force tactical RPGs, not the Shining series, but just the Shining Force, Shining Force 2, and Shining Force Sword of Page, these tactics games, only the main character has egress, except in um, Sword of Page. And as a child, I actually was just, I, I was just like, oh, I guess that's okay. I didn't think about it because I was a little child, so I didn't think that deeply about it. But it was only looking back on it when I realized that, oh, of course, it's because at one point in the game, there's a, there's a party split, and your main character is in charge of one party, and a different character, Natasha, is in charge of the other. So she has egress because of that temporary party split where she's the leader. Because the leader always has egress. So that's the only game where you have an extra egress character for a lot of the game. Not that she'll use it on her because she's a mage, so she has other things to do. But uh, that's just a little side note for you there. Um, yeah, I'll soften this guy up. We really gotta try and level... Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Really? Oh. I actually don't know what the mischance is. Because, uh, because again, the games isn't the game doesn't list that anywhere. As you can see, I'm sure that there's a way to calculate it, but I also don't know the formula that it uses. So it's you don't really know the hit percent chance or anything. The miss formula must be fairly the misses must be fairly unlikely because they don't seem to happen very often. They happen more against certain enemies. Now one thing I don't know in this game is if because I attacks can't do zero damage as far as I know, but if your character's attack is really low, they'll miss a lot. So I don't know if my guess is that this game, if your attack would do zero damage, it just counts as a miss. Um, so that makes it a little hard to tell how often you're actually missing versus how often your character just didn't have high enough attack. Because like low will miss a lot in battle later on because his his weapons just aren't as strong and his attack isn't very high. At least we can get him a little X from healing. <laughs> Everyone's still jammed in a pile. Uh, Hans doesn't really need another level, but also we don't want to get overwhelmed by these guys either. Although it's funny, the AI in this game, I think I mentioned this in the last episode, but I really don't know how the AI for the enemies is programmed, because sometimes there'll be cases where they could have killed your character, and they don't attack you for some reason, they just like wander off or they go attack someone else. They don't generally 
single target. Like, they won't all dogpile on one character to kill them. Like, look right there. The Dark Dwarf could have attacked Tao. And if he got a lucky double, he could even kill her, but he didn't attack anyone. Yeah, see, that's an example where I'm like, did he actually miss, or was Lil's attack just too weak? But it's, it's, it's somewhat... I, I don't know if it's just there's a lot more randomness, like they have a list of things they can do, and it just draws from that, rather than there being an AI per se that has specific tactics. It might just be like, attack or move or do nothing, and it just picks randomly. I honestly don't know. I'm more used to Fire Emblem where the AI's goal is to kill your characters, and if they can, <laughs> they always will. So if, if five dudes need to attack your characters and they die, they'll all attack. <laughs> One after another. <laughs> but that also makes the AI easier to manipulate since, you know, like you could put out a character as bait or something. Whereas here, you kind of can't because even if you put a character in an enemy's attack range, they won't necessarily walk towards you. Sometimes they'll just wander off away from the battle entirely. <laughs> it's for no reason that's clear to me. Okay, should be fine. I'm sad that we missed because I, we could have had this guy down to killable HP by now. Um, I guess I can soften him up a little. Because you can repeat battles in this one, you know, you don't have to worry as much about keeping everyone's levels even. Like, no one's going to miss a level. You know, or you're not gonna, like, get someone falling permanently behind unless you don't even try to keep them even. Because you can, you can keep going. You can redo the battle as many times as you want. Gong still hasn't managed to get even one level, I can't get him to the front of the party. <laughs> uh, but like, I really don't want to redo this battle, primarily because it's a little tedious due to how long it takes to get anywhere. Um, I think I'll have her go attack the Dark Dwarf. I think she should be able to kill him too. Because I, I don't think, like, magic resistance is a thing in this game. The spells basically do fixed damage. Nice. Um, and this one, I think, does, like, 6 to 8. Oh, we got Blaze level 2. That's great. That, that basically, it makes the spell, instead of just being someone two spaces away from you, now it's, like, a little plus sign. So it lets you attack more enemies at once, which is nice. Um, actually, I think I'll park him here so Tao can't get hit. She's a little squishy. More levels on the mages is great. <laughs> they're very, they're very useful. Even though their attacks are fixed damage, so sometimes they're not the most powerful attack you could do. Oh, very nice. The fact that they can hit multiple enemies at once makes them really good for crowd control. Hello. <laughs> you have got to do this, buddy. Come on, it's just a goblin. There we go. He can only do one point of damage to them. Oh, he didn't even level up. <sighs> I think I'm gonna try and feed this guy to Gong, if possible. It's it's tough because we can't control who gets their turn when. I think maybe Hans has like higher movement speed in the forest because he seemed to go really far there. Maybe it's because he's an elf. Again, the game doesn't really explain any of that, so it's hard to be sure. Oh my God, Gong! You need to fucking get your turn. <laughs> Ben got two turns in the time that I've been waiting. <laughs> this is seriously taking a while. I really want him to get a level though. He's he's weak now. Um, I guess I'll just have low heal again, just so he can get a little X. I I'd really like to get him another level because, you know, we want more MP for his healing spell, and also that way he won't instantly die if something attacks him. Unfortunately, healing doesn't give you that much X. Hopefully, Gong can actually do enough damage here. I'm not actually sure. Are you kidding me? Just... Uh, that's... And there's no counterattacks in this game, so we have to wait until his next turn. It's not like he can hit back here. Really? Really? Gong. Just, I swear, he's pretty good once you level him up. He, he actually is, because he can attack pretty well, and he has healing. He's not like your strongest attacker, but he's handy to have around. Really? Gong, how slow are you? This guy got two turns while you were waiting to get one turn. 
We may have to egress if Gong dies because he's... Okay, Gong, you better not miss this. You need to do this. There we go. There we go. Yes. Ah, oh, good, good. It's, the speed increase is important too because he clearly is a little too slow if he's getting his turn that rarely. I think that's what the turn order is based on anyway. Again, it's... It's possible that the game manual tells you somewhere, but I don't have the manual, obviously. I'm playing this on the, the Sega Genesis collection, so I don't have the original manual or anything. Um, but it's possible that was explained in the manual somewhere. <laughs> it's not in the main body of the game. Yeah, I think the forests make him move further, because he's, he's not moving as far just on the regular terrain. I think the other archer you get later is also an elf, so it's hard to say if it's because they're archers or because they're elves. It's <laughs> All archers are elves in this universe, I guess. <laughs> Which is a little weird, but hey. I'm trying to remember whether Princess Henri... We're gonna meet her later in the game. Not that much later, really, but not yet. Um, I'm trying to remember whether she also has the pointy ears like Tao does, because I'm trying to work out whether Tao is an elf or whether mages have pointed ears. Maybe they're like Hylians, you know, like Legend of Zelda style. They, they just, they're not elves, but they just have pointy ears. Because <laughs> she does have them. And not all of the human characters have them. Some of them do not. So it's not like it's just like all humans in this universe have them, it's specifically certain of them, like the mages. Or maybe they like the race of mages, like they- we'll go to the mage town, that's where we'll meet Henri. We saw that in the last episode, some guy told us we need to go to Manarina, I think it is. Oh, I for oh right, but I think we have enough for Blaze 1. Yeah, I forgot it falls to Blaze 2 when you do that. Again, the <laughs> the box where the the, the uh, window is popping up for me to select that is slightly covered by the microphone, so I can't actually see how much MP it costs. Um, but I don't know whether he can actually take them out, so I'm just gonna have him wait. Because oddly, they they won't attack us <laughs> here. I don't know why, but they won't. Um, do we actually have enough? We have just enough for one more. May as well use up all his MP. Because, like, once we're to the end of the battle like this, we're not gonna need to heal again, especially since we can kill the two rune knights without getting attacked back. So we may as well just get him as much exp as possible and use up the last of his MP. Oh, apparently the dwarf will attack, though, but, you know, now we're bottlenecked here, so it's... we're safe from the knights. Um... He doesn't have three range yet, sadly. Uh, I'm just gonna have him attack. Obviously he needs another level two, he's only at, you know, we want him to get- Oh, that was very good, we want him to get up to level three. Yay, and he did! Whoa, that was a- he got a lot of stats from that. I feel like the main character's stat growth may actually be just better than some of the other characters, because he seems to get multiple points in stats on a pretty regular basis. Which is nice, like I- just like I said before, it sucks when a character is, like, the required character, but they're not good. She's gonna move because she can't use any more spells. I think he should be okay. As long as... Yeah, even with the double, he would have been alright, I think, yeah. Uh, Loa has no more MP, so he's also just gonna hang out. Hans is gonna help out. Uh, it's fine if they're not even- like, we can grind the next battle. This one is just- this one is also hard to grind because you can't- it's hard to control who gets to the enemies first because you just have to do so much waiting to do that that it is not really worthwhile in my opinion. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go for it. It's always good to give the main character more rex. You know, level him up a bit, make him a little more tanky. Excellent. Well done, Shining Force. I It's sort of funny that we're called the Shining Force, because the Shining Force in all of these games is like the, the army of the hero nation. 
So like in Sword of Heisha, which is the one I played as a kid, the Shining Force is actually led by Prince Nick, who leaves at the start. You're like these other characters who are doing your own little thing. Um, but it's like, why are we the Shining Force instead of the main army of, of Rune or wherever, or Guardiana rather? <laughs> like, we're a collection of children who were sent to go look at the shrine, but we're the Shining Force now. To be fair, we're about to discover that the entire force of knights is dead, so there's really nobody left to be the Shining Force. <laughs> but, uh, but we didn't know that at the, at the moment he said that. Actually, you know, now that I talk to these guys and look at it, I said in the last episode that for some reason all the knights in Guardiana are centaurs. But there's these guys, too. So now I'm just even more baffled by the centaurs. Like, what? <laughs> Why are they there? So let's talk to some people. Oh, I can't get through the wall there. I also, it's interesting to look at the damage that's been done here. We were attacked, but we didn't see the attacking force. And all the monsters that we fought so far are just like basically dudes with swords and axes and things. Um, but here, you can see that, like, buildings have been blown up. These appear to be stone buildings, so, you know, they must have had some sort of very powerful... Like, people, like, those dark dwarves could presumably not chop down the wall of a building. This dog is also hiding indoors now. He was outside before. So, maybe they brought mages or some kind of, like, super weapon? Because the amount of damage that's been done is pretty extreme. Although, ugly, it's like the whole wall of the house is blown up and it's in ruins, but all the furniture is fine. <laughs> they didn't want to do too much damage. <laughs> all he's good at is buying and selling. To be fair, he's still more useful than all of the knights in the town who accomplish nothing. He can at least sell us things. This guy was uh, refusing to sell things before because he was having some problems, but now he's willing to actually sell us some weapons. So, let's see what we got. Short sword, spear, axe, staff, and arrow. Um, let's go to equip and check out what we've already got. So I already I have a middle sword, which is actually I'm pretty sure better than the short sword. Ken has a spear. Luke has a short sword. Oops, that's not what I. Actually, I guess use is fine. I can look at them at least. Taz already got a staff, Lowe's got a staff. Gong doesn't have a weapon. I'm trying to... I, I can't remember if he doesn't use weapons at all or if he gets, like, fist weapons later, but I don't think he can use any of the ones we've got now. And Hans already has the arrow. So there's actually no... <laughs> there's nothing much to get right now. Oh, this guy down here. So he got hurt. Let's talk to him. Cain of Runefaust. So we're probably going to run into him later. I actually don't remember him at all. He uh, didn't make an impression on me, I guess. Now, you remember this guy from the last episode as the guy who spends all this time getting drunk and railing about how the world is full of thief murderers. But after seeing his whole town be blown to pieces, that uh, made him want to fight again. But uh, it doesn't seem to have made him upset. It just, like, raised this fighting spirit, which is fascinating. He'll be at headquarters. We're gonna... It's at the castle. It's, it was, it's the room we couldn't go in before. This monster sort of wrecked my shop, but the old guy drove them off. He'll be a useful addition to our team for now. You know, these are the, the characters you get at the start of the game, so many of them will be replaced by later ones. What about the next attack? Well, all your knights are, like, dead, so I guess you'll die. <laughs> that lady's still got her fighting spirit, though. <laughs> Come see him later. Does he give us something? I don't remember that he does. Let's save the game, anyway. While we're here. Sure, sure, sure. The little jingle for saving is kind of cool. It sounds very, like, heroic and epic. Okay, that way we save the results of that battle. So we don't have to do it again, because it is boring. So we have our second optional party member, along with Gong. And now, we're gonna watch some cutscenes. Well, first I'm gonna actually check on Gong. This is our headquarters. It's the building we weren't allowed to go into Fort Nova. It's hanging out down here. Um, join. Advice? What advice does he give us? Beware of giant Okay, buddy. <laughs> that is just... 
I like how it wasn't advice relevant to the current situation. It was just like a random tip about out there in the world as bets. So you can see all these different beds and the tables and stuff. Eventually this will all be filled with party members. We'll get like a whole bunch of people in our army. And the ones who are currently fit to go into battle that we've selected will be down here. And they all have something to tell us too. This guy wants to be a real knight. I think his units are good because all the other knights are dead. Who else is going to do it? This guy doesn't really have anything to say. He doesn't really have much to say. <laughs> Tao just wants to burn things to death. That's <laughs> that's her only goal here. He's most useful as a healer. He will not get in. He will not really get in any good wax, frankly. He does like one damage right now, so. No explanation. There's no explanation of who Gong is or why he was hanging out in that house, but sure. <laughs> he's actually Hans is fast, so he doesn't get doubled very much. So he's actually pretty much fine being in front. Because this game doesn't have counterattacks, there's really no reason the archers have to be far from the front. And now it's cutscene time. Hurry, Ben Kane of Russ has injured the king and Lord Varius. This is the guy, as a side note, who last time said that uh. He thought sending us was a bad idea, like putting the fate of the world in our hands is a bad idea. So this guy's pretty smart, actually. <laughs> I also really love this line of dialogue because it, I don't know if it's just a poor translation. This is an old game, right? So the translation may not be super great. Um, it was a Japanese game that was ported to the West. So him saying, go away, Kane, it sounds less like he's like, be gone, evil thing, and more like he's like, go away, I don't understand. He just sounds like he's like whining at him. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, just leave. And this guy... He actually... I don't know if like this secretly is Dark Soul and he's just calling himself something else, because he kind of looks similar to Dark Soul, right? He's like an evil-looking dude in a metal like helmet that doesn't show his face. He has one glowing red eye, not glowing eye, which is odd. His portrait is also blinking, but the frames, like the timing on them is a little weird, so it looks a little strange, honestly. But anyway, he stole the treasure of Guardiana, apparently. I don't actually know what that treasure is, though. The game has not mentioned it yet. Whoa! Oh, dang. That's, uh... Ooh. That, man, if you're... This game should have, like, an epilepsy warning. That that type of flashing light really could trigger epilepsy in someone with photosensitive epilepsy. But anyway, Varius was a mentor character, so of course he's going to die without joining our army. This is his daughter who's going to join our party after this. It's actually great that Cain of Runefaust, he killed, like, our the really strong dude, and then he was like, you know, I could kill the rest of you and prevent you from ever threatening me again, but I think I'll just leave and wait for you to level up and come to me. <laughs> Very polite of him. <laughs> and he apparently teleported out. I actually... Does the king have a name? I don't think he's been referred to by name at all, so he's just the king. He also has a very generic portrait. Like, the others all have these, like, wacky hair and colorful outfits, and they're, like, elves and dog people. He's just an extremely bog standard. Like, if someone said, draw a picture of a medieval king, you know, that's basically what you'd draw or whatever. He's very boring, which is possibly why he does not survive <laughs> the first couple battles. He's not important at all. <laughs> the Gate of the Ancients is the only access to the tower. And the gate can only be opened by the key. You must find it before it falls into the hands of evil. You should never let them open the gate. Now, we don't know what the tower does, because as the opening crawl told us, apparently that was all forgotten. This was a thousand years ago. No one wrote it down. Guardiana is guarding this gate for reasons they don't know. Um, they apparently also didn't bother writing down like where the key was, because <laughs> the king can't apparently tell us that, which... Yeah, if, you know, if no one's supposed to go in there, why does he even have a key? They should have just, like, destroyed the key so nobody could get in. I don't know. Find out why Runefest is interested in the gate. I'm gonna assume it's because opening it will let them, like, destroy the world or there's something really, like, a weapon or something back there. I don't know, man. That seems like an obvious uh, conclusion. Your Majesty, whose name we never learned. Henri, who is the princess, is going to be the actually important royalty in this story. The king dies. It's funny because that's the exact same animation as um, Cain of Runefaust used to teleport away, so perhaps the king, instead of dying, has merely teleported somewhere else because he was tired of being in this game. 
Now is not the time for tears and grief. Alteron should be our next goal. That is the town up to the south, uh, the northeast of the map. Then let's go find that key. Although I don't know why Alteron is our next goal because we don't seem to have any reason to think we don't know where the key is. There's no reason to think it would be in Alteron. Really, you'd think our next goal would be Mount Arena to find the princess, <laughs> but <laughs> the monsters there are too high level for now. <laughs> and she's also going to the headquarters. This guy is the only survivor of all the ministers that have- well, Nova's coming with us. So he survived also, because he wasn't here. I guess at least she won't have to clean his room anymore, though. Let's talk to everyone before we leave. Aw, this lady has resolved her beef with Tao. They're leaving as friends. You know, they're parting as friends. It will. We're going to go to Monarina. And we are going to recruit Princess Henri while we're there. She is a magic user. Unlike Tao, who specializes in fire spells, she is going to get all the ice spells. The ice spells are actually a little more powerful than the fire spells. They like also cost more MP. They're like the second tier, I guess. Which is a little funny. The man in the chapel knows much. Perhaps he can advise you. I actually don't think he gives any particular advice if they're talking about the guy who saves your game. Oh no, they're talking to the other- they, oh, they must be talking about the other guy who said we should come see him later. We should go see him. <laughs> he couldn't spot the Runefast army with a telescope? What, did they teleport in? How would you- I feel like- And we apparently can't look in the telescope. <laughs> I feel like you should have not needed a telescope to see an army marching across the plain towards you, really. You could have just looked out the window. Sadly, all these nights, uh, the centaur people are gone. The only surviving centaurs were Ken and May. <laughs> the last of- oh, this is where the guy's family hid. We never really find anything else out about this kid that I recall. Like, we don't find out her name or anything. She does seem to have elf ears. I wonder if this is supposed to be Simone? The the sprite colors aren't right. Simone has brown hair and a, and a purple dress. But, you know, it's an old game. Like, the spriting might- there might be some palette limitations or something. Maybe it wasn't possible to make them match. But, uh, she does have the elf ears. And she does- she- I, I don't know, we never find an explanation for why this child has psychic dreams. It's just sort of there. <laughs> oh, and also, I believe we can now steal all the treasure. Because the people who are guarding it are gone. Oh, actually, that guy's just injured and doesn't care anymore. An antidote? Well, that'll be useful if we get poisoned by the bats. A medical herb. Very nice. This game does have a very limited inventory. Um, each character can only hold four items, as you can see. And Ben already has quite a few, so I'm going to pass some of his medical herbs elsewhere. Who else can use them? Uh, I guess Hans can have one. This is another one of those, like, it's an old game, so this isn't really a complaint, but it is one of those things where I'm like, I'm glad modern games are different because, oh my god, navigating these menus takes so long. Like, the fact that you can't move multiple items at once, the fact that it has to reopen the list every time. Ugh, it's a little frustrating. Oh, let me also quickly check. Yeah, May starts with the, the lance. Basically, the spear that Ken has is a 1-2 range weapon. It's like the javelin and fire emblem. This is an item that lets us escape battle. Um, so I guess that's good if Ben ran out of MP somehow. He doesn't really have anything else to do with his MP, but I guess it could happen. Maybe he gets a spell later? I don't remember. Because if he dies, you lose automatically, so... That, I believe, permanently increases defense. And this permanently increases attack. Again, our inventory is full, so we have to shift some things around. Oh, this... I will say that um, even by the time that sort of Hasia came out, which was two games after this, they had improved this system slightly so they didn't have to pop the menu back up every time. Oh, right, I didn't miss it. They took all they could carry, but all of it's still here! <laughs> Apparently they couldn't- oh, they took whatever was in that box. Oh, that must have been the treasure of Guardiana, the- whatever, like, the secret item was. They apparently didn't bother to take all the, like, fucking antidotes and shit. They didn't need those. Okay, and we can pop into headquarters and say hi to May, anyway. 
But uh, but yeah, so Jack Ken has the one two range javelin, and you can see that may you can also see that they're sorted by character class. So these are both warriors with axes, you know. These are both knights, and then we have mages, healers, you know. So it's as we get more characters, that's they'll always be in a fixed order based on that. Yeah, so she's in this for revenge for the death of her father. Uh, we should buy her a spear, because the 1-2 range weapon is weaker than the lance she has is melee only. It's, you know, it has to be an adjacent foe. But it has higher attack. You can hear that the uh, background music has changed to a sadder music. But having a 1-2 range weapon is quite useful. You know, it just, for situations like we saw in that previous battle where, like, you you can't easily get all of your guys adjacent, you know, you're stuck behind someone. Uh, is there anything else useful? The hand axe, the hand axe. Um, unfortunately, the game also does not... Gord already has a hand axe, and I assume Luke can use it. So basically, I just want to compare the two items and see which is better, because I don't think there's any easy way to do... Ah, so the hand axe is actually a little better. Okay, so in that case, I'll, we can sell his little sword, and we can get everyone the hand axe. I'll just buy one for Gort, since Luke is holding one now. It's just as easy. It's one of those things where it's like, you know, we don't really... It's two points of attack, so, you know, it's not going to matter that much, but at the same time... We saw instances where an enemy survived with like one HP, so it is it is good. I love how when you sell them things they go, it's mine, all mine, even if it's not particularly valuable. So uh, with all that uh, shopping done, I think we've got enough medical urge too. We've got quite a lot right now. Oh, and let's talk to this guy before we leave, before I save the game here. Hello, Ben. I know a legend that may help you. Of course I want to hear it. Somewhere on Rune is a land of the ancients. The key to the gate might be there. I mean... Okay, A, considering that we're the town that's in charge of guarding this gate, I feel like this should be something that we all, like, learned in school or something, not something this one random old guy tells me if I remember to talk to him. B, that's pretty broad. It's like, oh, well, it's the key of the ancients, so maybe it's in the land of the ancients. It's like, yeah, no, I, I would never have guessed that, buddy. <laughs> but thanks for trying to help. You're more useful than most of the townspeople, but that's... He also doesn't know where this... <laughs> land is. It's just there somewhere. Okay, so now we're off to Alteron. I'm trying I, there, I'm trying to remember if this town. I feel like I, I don't remember it all. <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> I don't know. There it is. Enemies await you on the road to Alteron. Take all precautions, but this battle will be a lot less annoying because as you can see, we're not starting in mountains. Um, and these enemies have really high range, so they'll get to us pretty quickly. Those are the bats that Novo was talking about before. So let's view the map. We're on a nice little path here. We've got these bat enemies. Oh, we have to press Y on them. Um, they, they're they pretty fast and they're pretty strong, and they can sometimes put you to sleep, if I remember right, or maybe it's poison you. In sort of Asia, they put you to sleep. And we've got a ton of these dark dwarves. So you can see that we've already leveled up beyond fighting an army of goblins. We're past that point. We have loads of these rune knights, too. Who are quite strong. So, we'll probably have to restart, you know, the battle at least once here. Um, just because there's a lot of enemies that really- oh, well, at least we got two attacks. The, the bats I found dodge more than other stuff, too. They're harder to hit. That's my impression, anyway. The game, again, the game doesn't tell you this stuff, but I, I, that's what I've generally found in playing this game. They, you miss them more often, which is really annoying. And since they can fly, they can pretty much attack whichever of your dudes they want. And they have huge range, too, so they're pretty annoying. Every time I fight them, I feel like they should take bonus damage from arrows because of Fire Emblem, but I don't think they actually do. It just, it feels like they should. <laughs> Oh, see what I mean? They they dodge a lot, which is really irritating. Anything like that, which is a pure random chance, there's nothing you could do about it, is just annoying in games because it's like, 
It just slows down the gameplay and frustrates you. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a legitimate source of difficulty, it's just an annoying thing you have to put up with. Especially in a game like this where I don't think there's really any way to boost your hit chance or anything, it's just there. So it's just like, great. Alright, let's give this another try, May. Oh, This is gonna take a while. I guess Gon can go fight this guy. Yeah, at least we'll get quite a lot of levels. Wow, good job, Gon. I wish May had hit that last attack because then you would have killed the guy. Oh well. Oh, they do quite a bit of damage for their level as well. May's pretty tanky. She's quite a strong unit. The the knights in general are pretty good. So we'll have a lot of them in the party. Oh, I feel like there's no point in having low attack. He's just gonna get himself killed. Um, hmm. He's not really anywhere useful. It, because of his one-two range weapon, there's nothing much he can do. Urg. Ow. Oh, do your best. Alright, let's start. You see, you can see how the battle, this battle, the difficulty is a lot higher than the previous battle. So if you didn't get all of your dudes up to, uh, oh, he's already level three though. I don't want to waste it on. This. I'm gonna have him attack the dwarf because I don't think he'll kill him. I think he'll just like chip him down to one or something. Yeah, there we go. And I want to feed that kill to someone else. I gotta be thinking about my level ups, you know. But uh, if you if you didn't really restart at either of the previous two battles and your guys are like all level 1 and 2, this would be very difficult. Oh, this is a good chance to show off Blaze 2. And uh, nice thing here, is this spell is not friendly fire, so it will not hit your allies. If I remember right, I'm pretty sure I remember right. <laughs> there we go. And it does a little more damage, not a lot. But you can see how useful it is. We whittled down those two and then she cleaned up in one hit. Cosmer and Pita. But, uh, and enemies have a tendency to stack up in blocks like that in this game, so it's definitely comes in handy. Yeah, that was good just because, you know, we don't want to get overwhelmed with the Dark Dwarves, because even though we're a little higher level now... Oh, I forgot to equip his weapon. I forgot that when you buy one, it does not automatically equip. That's why he's just punching with nothing in his hand. I'll have to do that on his next turn. <laughs> Whoops. But yeah, the Dark Bruce are still quite dangerous. I do think that all is a good example of how, like, older games are not, like, the, they're not terribly well balanced, because there's a bit of a spike between the last battle and this one. Both in terms of the sheer number of enemies, I feel like there's more on this map, and also how strong they are. The previous two battles mostly had goblins, and then we jump right into having tons of the uh, knights here, and and a lot of Dark Wars. So it's a bit of a jump. And you know, you don't know that jump is coming necessarily, so you might not realize that you gotta make sure your dudes are getting some levels on that previous battle. Poor Gorge, he doesn't even have a weapon to defend himself. It's in his first battle with the Shining Force, he joined the Shining Force and then immediately took away his weapon, gave it to someone else, and then gave him a new weapon and didn't equip it. That's I'm surprised Gort <laughs> didn't just leave. <laughs> just like, I think I'm done with this army. <sighs> He's also, I, I think both of the warriors, this is true, him and Luke, they're a little slow, so they won't get turns as frequently. A lot of games have this problem, or a lot of RPGs anyway, where like, speed becomes the god stat. You know, it's like the one stat that's really important. Um, cause in a lot of games it might affect your accuracy, so you can't hit anything if you're not fast enough, or it might affect, you know, whether you can dodge, so you take more damage if you don't have good speed, or whether you get doubled, you know, like in, this is the thing in a lot of Fire Emblem games, is where having high speed can give you better defense than having high defense, precisely because, um, getting double attacked could make you, like, it, keeping into a single attack might ultimately have you take less damage than taking two attacks with slightly harder defense. So like speed helps you tank, it helps you hit. If you have a game where you're allowed to double attack, it helps you do damage. 
The nice thing is that we can equip weapons freely, which is also why you can easily change between the the uh, lance and the spear. Oh, that was good damage, Gord. I'm sad that I didn't I forgot to equip your weapon last time. We could have killed that guy. The bats are really annoying. <laughs> They're not that tough. They're just irritating. Okay. Um, he's not gonna be able to make a dent in that. Who got hit? Tao. Okay, I'll go heal Tao. Yeah, we'll probably play this battle at least twice. I feel like this game, I don't know that it needs you to grind to win, but, like, there's enough RNG and stuff like that that I feel like it's worth doing at least a bit of grinding. Ah, uh, good. The, the increase in MP is the key for him. He needs more heals. Because that's mostly what he does. Um, so I'll just have her give him a little love tap. Oh, yeah. Ideally, I mean, I, well, everyone will be at least level 3. We've got a couple levels still hanging around, and ideally we'll mostly have everyone at level 4 here before we enter Alteron. Very nice job, Gong. That's... I, you know, that was a nice evade. <laughs> I feel like you don't evade attacks that often in this game, so it's it's kind of... It's good when you do. It's, it makes you so happy. <laughs> um, I don't know whether... ...or not. It, uh, maybe? Oh, nice. Oh yeah, because he got plus three attack last level, so he's quite a bit better now. That's the thing, in games where leveling up doesn't always give you the same amount of stuff, it's like each increase in level doesn't make you exact. So like, going up one level doesn't always give you the same increase in strength. It depends on how many stat points you get. Because in this game, there is some randomness in that. So you can potentially get nothing. In which case you're higher level, but you're no better. Or you can get a ton. So he got an especially good level last time. Okay, Gort. Why don't you get your first kill? Nice hand axe. The hand axe is quite a strong weapon. It's pretty good. It's like one more kill and he'll be able to get to level 3 already. So that's quite good. No. You come up here. Gong can go over here. We really gotta get Gong's level up as well. Actually, I guess let's just do a quick... Uh... It doesn't have a unit option yet. Yeah, can... Ken is level 3, Luke is level 3, Ben is level 3, Lowe is level 3, Hans is, I want to say, level 4. Uh, yeah, so it's just these three who we need to focus on. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have put them off in the corner, but I wanted them to go fight those bats. Also, I wish those bats would come towards us, because it's like, this map is huge, just approach us a little so we can just get this over with. A lot of the maps in this game are just disproportionately large when you consider, like, just there's, there doesn't seem to be enough enemies to really justify the use of space. They're just so large. If I remember right, May also struggles a little with the low HP problem, same way as Luke does. She just tends to not get a lot of HP, so she is not very tanky. She tends to get good attack, though. Which, and that's another thing where I feel like, because in a lot of games, like if you read a, you know, a game facts guide or something, especially with these older games, like, I, I feel like they always say, you know, so with whatever coins you get to start the game, buy some armor, and I always buy a weapon first, almost, because, hey, I guess that's just my personality as a gamer. I'm like, where's the new sword? I'm, I'm not as excited about buying plus one chainmail or whatever. I'm like, no, I want to buy the sword. <laughs> but also, I feel like it can ultimately, buying better armor is not always as beneficial to your defense as the better weapon. Because, you know, even if the armor can shave off a little damage, if it takes you two attacks to kill something, you get hit twice. In, in Well, not necessarily in this game, because of the way that you dog... Like, enemies don't counterattack. But in most RPGs, you know, enemies are attacking back, so it'll take an extra turn. Whereas if you can kill them in one turn by getting a stronger weapon, you'll take less damage. That halves the amount of damage you took right there. Which is probably a, bitter, a bigger reduction than the better armor. So in a way it's the same principle as like why speed is more important. Because you avoid more attacks and you kill stuff more quickly. So it, it kind of really... The principle of like the best offense, defense is a good offense, is often super true in video games. Not all games. You can design a game where that's not the case. Oh, very good, Ken. 
Oh, nice. You, I love when they level up not getting a KO because then someone else can get the KO and it just feels like, it feels so efficient. <laughs> I feel like I used the exp well. It's, it's so hard to predict when stuff is going to attack us. Sometimes it, like, it doesn't attack when it could have, and I don't know, it's it's sort of random. Okay, uh, even though I should save that kill for someone else, I cannot resist my urge to have a tower destroy both of them. I just really love using mages in this game. <laughs> but someone else can get that one at least. It's just, it's so satisfying, you know? Just... Can rain fiery death on a whole bunch of enemies. <laughs> oh, she didn't get any MP from that. That is a disappointing level. This is what I mean about how much better levels make you depends on the RNG. Because for the mages, I would say getting more MP is the single most important thing. If they got nothing but MP, I'm happy. Because they, their whole thing is casting spells, right? So it's like, I need you to be able to cast additional ones, especially now that she got the more expensive spell. <laughs> Like, attack is not useful for them. <laughs> it doesn't influence the damage of the spells. Oh, I think Gong should be able to finish this guy off, though, so at least we can hopefully get him a level? Maybe? I'm not sure how close he actually was. Nice! This way at least hopefully we'll get everyone to level 3. We still have all of those knights to defeat, so... You know, we should have some more levels to get in there as well. Fuck. <laughs> but that's- this is why they're so irritating. They're not that strong. I just don't like them because you miss them so often that it just takes way longer than it should to kill them. It's so irritating. Look at this shit! Look at this! It's terrible. <laughs> oh, it's just terrible. Well, we've got quite a few characters level 4 now, so I think we're doing alright. I do find that generally Hans tends to level up really fast because- uh, and I think it's mostly because he has- the two range stuff, so I feel like I'm always- he always ends up being right behind someone ready to pick off the enemy, like... So he ends up just cl doing a lot of, like, the cleanup kills. Oh, he really needs a heal, too, so low is a good chance for you to use your magic. Apparently the way healing works is you summon, like, a tiny fairy who does it for you. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know if they thought that deeply about, like, the the mythos of the Shining Force universe. Oh man, you know what's funny is, I completely overlooked that that knight could attack us. And you know why? Because I've been playing a lot of Fire Emblem Heroes lately. And in that game, cavalry can't move through trees, so I just, like, totally forgot that that's, that is specific to that game. I was just like, oh, we're fine, we have the trees to protect us. I completely forgot that that is not how this game works. Oh nice, he leveled up from distant attack, that's really good. Now we have an extra level 4 character. Oh, these knights are being pretty aggressive. Gotta clean him up here. Um, He can hopefully finish this guy off. He did 7 damage to the bats before. Ugh! Gorth. <laughs> I'm mad now. <laughs> Let's try and whittle this knight down. The rune knights are actually pretty dangerous because they're decently tanky, and they are very strong, and they have huge range, also. Uh, yeah, I may as well get him a little more. May and Gord still haven't leveled up, but like, I want to get rid of this guy. Because he's annoying, and they sometimes inflict status effects. I think they do anyway. They didn't sort of haze us, so I'm sort of kind of remembering that game, but... Aw, oh, tragically, we are out of MP for- this is why she needs to get more MP. I cannot resist the urge to ever get the KO, and also, real talk, the knights are strong enough that we kind of don't want to have them sitting around waiting for someone else to pick them off because they could do a lot of damage to us. Uh, he should be okay. Maybe I won't even bother repeating this battle. I feel like we got a good- oh nice! He's level 4 now too! I feel like we got a good number of levels here. We got a lot of people at level 4. Tao's at level 5. We're doing fine. Uh, I don't think she's going to be able to kill this guy, but... If only she could have gotten a lucky devil attack. Uh, hmm. I'm having Ken get this kill mostly because there are two other rune knights waiting there, and I just don't want, like... I want to reduce the number of characters who could potentially take two attacks before we can get to them. 
Oh good, it's Lowe's turn, so he can heal Ben, who's in a bit of trouble here. I don't know if in this game the AI tends to prioritize the main character. Because in a lot of games, the way the AI is programmed is basically to make the player lose, right? That's that's what makes it challenging. You know, it's it's trying to do things that block your win condition. And if the main character dies, you you lose and you know, you, you have a game over. So I don't know if they prioritize the main character at all. Sometimes it seems like they might, because you know, the main character, I feel like I, I feel like they tend to take a lot of attacks. But I cannot be certain. That's only the impression I have. You know, and that's, you know, it can be swayed by bias. Get Gort. Hopefully we can at least get him to level 3. Yes! We're making good progress here. Um, I don't, you know, he did 4 damage last time, so he shouldn't kill this guy, but he will soften him up enough that someone else can take him out, yeah. Yeah, I, I, they do seem to attack the main character when they can, so I, I do wonder if the AI is programmed to prioritize him. It would make sense. Um, Gong can't get into range to attack, so I'll have him heal. Having Gong also be able to heal is also nice, because even on turns where he's not in a position to attack, you know, at least it's another way for him to get a little X. Having a backup healer doesn't hurt. I want to save that guy is at 2 HP and hopefully have May kill him, because um, she's still at level 2. It's always, honestly, it's always chancy in this game leaving enemies alive, because, like, you don't know when you'll get your next turn. Because there is some randomness, at least it's my impression, that there is some randomness in the turn order. Well, he's not going to be able to do two damage. I'll just have him go up here. Good, okay. May, we must defeat the Rune Knight. So, um, the turn order is not fixed. It's not static every time, I don't think. So, and it's not like every unit gets a turn each round. Oh, nice. Oh, she got a big defense increase. Um, she gets pretty good defense, I feel like. Her HP doesn't go up that much, though. Um, so, it's, so sometimes an enemy could potentially get two attacks before your unit gets to move at all. So leaving an enemy alive can be dangerous because you don't know what's going to happen. But, you know, I want to make sure I get some kills to my dudes here that are a little weaker. Everyone's at least level 3 now, so that's good. I feel like we're we're on target here. And we only have a few people at level 3. And, oh, very nice, Hans. This battle was long, so I don't want to redo it. So I think I'll say... Oh, I guess I'll have her... She won't be able to kill the guy, but she can at least get in an attack. See, this is why the two ranged weapons are nice, because sometimes you just can't line up for an attack, but, you know, this way you still get to do something. Chip him down. Is there anyone next to Gong who needs a heal? Oh, I'm, like, leaning over here because, <laughs> again, I need to move the mic. It is exactly covering the box that's showing me the other unit's HP. <laughs> Somehow I managed to put it in, like, the, exactly the wrong spot. <laughs> Main problem is my recording setup here, there's a lot of stuff, um, all piled up on the surface where I have everything. So it's sort of hard to maneuver it, there's only so much space, because I got my, my laptop, and the TV, and the switch, and all of the cables, and the mic, and a bunch of other stuff, because, like, you know, this isn't a dedicated surface, I also store things there. <laughs> Kane will have to do better than that to stop you! <laughs> Were they here to stop us? Because I feel like if Kane wanted to stop us, he could have just killed us, like, right there. Like, we... <laughs> he killed, like, the guy who's much stronger than us. He didn't seem to care. Here we are in Alteron. Welcome to Alteron, stranger! I don't think there's really anything to search here. There... I, I, I think I remember there being at least one hidden item in this game, but, like... <laughs> I'm probably gonna complain. That woman over there gives me the creeps. They say she's a witch. I think she's one of the baddies. You're gonna kill me, right? Deathless of the North, yeah. She's like, I think we're gonna fight her later if I'm right. It's sort of obvious. Oh, I forgot that there's a boundary there. It's sort of obvious that she's a bad guy. This isn't a subtle game. <laughs> I hear there's an underground passage in the castle. Let's keep it a secret. How do you know about it, lady? Have you been in there? 
It's a flat, flat world. <laughs> I do love all the bookcases in this game. They all just have little funny touches. Oh, treasure! No, oh, are you really? Oh, that's nice. Oh, this is good because um, Ken doesn't have a bronze lance, so now he can have one too. I always like the knights to all have um, both weapons. So basically, as the weapons get stronger, for the knights, we'll have um, one range and one two range weapons. And I like them to always have both. Man, that one chest that had nothing was such a troll. <laughs> Why even put those chests in? It only disappoints me. Also, I would love if there had been something hidden in that vase. I... I am kind of irritated by video games with a lot of missable items because it's kind of stressful. You know, it makes me feel like I should be using a guide. But I also do love when there's hidden stuff. I really do. <laughs> so, the tension. And uh, this is our headquarters, but it, I guess it's also another building because it has two staircases. Oh, this must be the hidden passage into the castle, I'm assuming, or... I'm gonna guess that we fall down here from like a pit at some point, or like a trap door, because there's no other reason for this to be here. <laughs> oh. Wow, I'm really congested today. Sorry. Here we are in our headquarters. Here's our army. They're looking good. Let's see what Nova's advice is. None of it is particularly useful, but I don't know. I'll just check. Anyways, me just not <laughs> Nova. I feel like if you think that you need to explain to this guy that archers attack from far away so you should close with them quickly, he's not the best suited for saving the world. He might not be ready if that's the advice he needs. The Ancient's Darkness Rune Fest? <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, buddy. So did they just not see the gigantic army that just destroyed our whole town? Jeez. <laughs> These people are assholes. I am Ben, I don't- Oh, you live in Guardiana, I see. Unfortunately, it is. Sorry, friend. A lot of people you knew died, I'm gonna guess. Are those guys wearing, like, bandages on their heads or a headband or what? Let's see what weapons we got here. See, now we don't have to buy- Oh, they don't even have the spear. The, uh, lance, yeah. So- they have exactly the same things as in the previous town. And the previous town is not particularly far away, so why is this here? Everyone in town comes here once a day! <laughs> really? Like, what kind of sad town is this? It, they all come here to- I guess these, like- I guess this is like a bar? Because I doubt they're all coming here every day to buy more swords. <laughs> all y'all need to get out of the way of this chest. Okay, good pretty busy today. Busy with people who are not buying anything, so not that busy. What's this guy? Oh, fine. I, so I'm, I'm using a joystick to play this, you know, on, I'm playing it on the Switch, you know, so I have the, the uh, Joy-Con. And it's very easy to accidentally walk a space further than I meant to. I mean, I say that, but I did this on the original with the D-pad anyway, so... <laughs> The movement is very smooth, I will say. Like, it's... You, it, you walk pretty fast. Oh, I thought I might be able to go one more space there. Oops. Um, but it's pretty easy to accidentally walk past where you meant to. And the boundaries at the edges of the town are not always super clear <laughs> where they are. Is there anything useful here? Um, I think we have everything we need. So this is like, um, it's kind of funny that the, the, on the map, the town is a little castle. Why didn't you give those to me? <laughs> I do like that this game has like pointless little cutscenes like that that are just for fun though. <laughs> it's just private property. This is like Viridian City in Pokemon with the guy who's like trying to build a house. Um, let's get over there. But yeah, it's like sort of it appears to be built like on top of like a little marsh or something. 
But uh, on the map, it just looked like a castle with no dot w water or anything. Oh, this is where we get Chris. She is the second healer, and she is better. <laughs> she gets better spells, and she's faster. He's pretty good as kings go. That guy's very chill. <laughs> It's clear what we must do. <laughs> I was sort of hoping that would help us. <laughs> nice! Thanks, lady. I wouldn't have done that if you had just shoved me in the lake in the first place. Once again, my inventory is full. I'm gonna give this to, uh... I guess Luke doesn't have anything else. Oh right, this <laughs> is like, how do I leave? <laughs> I like, look at the currents that are dictating <laughs> like, what is happening there. That are unclear. Oh, this is our save point. The king called the friar to the castle. I always wanted to stand up here, but you can't save our game, apparently. I'm in the medical herb. Oh, I'm, I'm racking up a lot of items here. The limited inventories in this game do kind of suck. And also, the way that you navigate your inventory is fairly annoying. It's a little clunky. The books are written in a language unknown to Ben. Is it from that ancient civilization? Does this guy seriously won't save our game? I, I just want to save my... I spent, some, oh, I spent so much time exploring this town. See, on the map, it doesn't look like it's like a town built on top of a swamp. But there's all this- it's by the coast, but that's not what's going on here. There's like little rivers everywhere. Doo -doo -doo. Uh, let's see, have we explored everything? I think we have. Don't want to go to the castle until we've- oh wait, we can go up here. Gotta explore this town first, this is an RPG. Oh no, we already talked to this person. Oh, we didn't talk to you though. Money makes so I'll go around, youngster. Okay, buddy. Get out of the way. I want to read your. I want to read your bookshelf. Come on. So I'll search the spot while I'm waiting. Nothing is unusual. Oh, there we go. Arg. Arg. I stepped away at exactly the moment he was gonna leave. Oops. I wish there was just one A button for talk and search. Go. A hundred one places to hide, buddy. That's an amazing book. I'm assuming some bits hidden in these chests. I gotta blow, gotta blow my nose, I'm so congested right now. Okay, okay, I can, I can talk clearly once more. Nothing, well I guess, it, well to be fair, a treasure chest is not the best place to hide your money. Oh, I'm, I'm full up on items again. It doesn't even, like, put it to the second person in line or anything. I'm starting to run out of space. Oops. <clears throat> Let's see if the middle sword is better than one of the axes. Because then we could give that to Luke, since I already have a middle sword. <laughs> Other people better be able to equip this. <laughs> because otherwise, there is no point to it existing. Oh, it's and you gotta go through like you gotta give the item, then you equip the item. It's it's one point better. Very nice. Maybe his money is in this. Maybe this guy doesn't actually have any money, and he just likes the idea of having it, so he just reads books about it <laughs> because it doesn't seem to be hidden anywhere in his house. Unless maybe it's in the the backyard somewhere. <laughs> Hope springs eternal. Not that there's really anything to buy right now, but there will be later on. Well, there's been a lot of strangers visiting the castle lately. As you may have surmised, we are going to run into some trouble in this castle. <laughs> there's uh, some bad on as usual, and we'll have to fight people. Because it's a, a tactics RPG, right? So every time we go anywhere, there's going to be a fight, because <laughs> that's what the gameplay is. So... <laughs> Otherwise, there'd be nothing. I like how they built this whole this whole little house with a closed sealed door and like everything to guard a medical herb. <laughs> that was the precious treasure. 
Ah, that needed special care. Alright. Huh. King awaits us. All these weird statues. Who's this person? I have not seen her. I guess this is like the princess? She's got a crown. So this is the princess of Alteron. I don't know the king's secret. <laughs> His secret is he likes treasure. Friend, don't we all? <laughs> also, it's not a secret that is hidden everywhere. Look at this. It's just sitting around. Naturally, we'll search all of these. We've already got one of these, though, and I'm pretty sure when we get our next archer, they'll already have a weapon. So... I mean, we can sell it, but it's like, what is it for? As long as you can have an extra. I mean, I guess there's not that many different items to give out right now. This is Chris, by the way. And here's what I, I mentioned in the previous episode about how there's like random dog people in Shining Force. This is one of them. There's no explanation of who she is, really, or why she's a dog. And also, didn't that other woman say this was like her granddaughter or whatever? That woman was human. So why is her granddaughter a dog person? Why does she have elves? <laughs> Just, there's a lot of questions here. <laughs> None of them will ever be answered. But the character designs in this game, well, they sure are memorable, definitely. We do it all day! That, that guy's dedicated to his job. That would also be the life for me, frankly. <laughs> no, see, no, fine. It's... <laughs> this armor is too itchy. Are you wearing it directly on your skin? You're, you're supposed to have, like, padding underneath, you know? I thought there was a secret switch there for some reason. I guess this is like a hazy memory. But uh, we have all this shit, but we're running out of space. What is the healing seed? I assume it just heals more. I guess Tau can have it. Oh, in this kingdom there's a bunch of centaurs too, with, again, no explanation of where they came from. <coughs> so congested. Oh, see those guys who ran away up there? Yeah, those are Runefaust knights. <laughs> so obviously, this kingdom is not going to help us at all. <laughs> like, at least give me coins instead! I can't hold all these items! <laughs> I just don't have the space. I realize I could just use some of them, but I like to save the stat boosts for later in the game. You know, when you get oh, another sword, well, I can give this to Gord at least. I don't know why they even have an item shop in this town, because you can't buy this item at the item shop, and it's a better item than what is available there. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, menus. Okay, Gord. And this time I will remember to equip you a new sword. A bread of life. This increases HP. But again, I... I really prefer to save some of these for later in the game. You know, we don't want to give them all to the starter characters. But... I'm running out of room. I wish that that's a nice prize. You can hold as many coins as you want. I, um... I wish the headquarters had, like, an item storage chest that I could keep those in. You know, until later. I think we get to go in there after the, we talk to the king and everything. Um, have I gone everywhere I could? Oh, what's down here? Watching water like that. I don't want to go to guess. Well, watching, watching the water flow by can be very soothing. This, this jar stands out, but there was nothing in it. Oh, this is the, um, the prison. This is the friar who was in the castle, which I think is sort of fascinating because, like, he's obviously not dangerous to the king. He's just a NPC. 
So it kind of makes you feel like he was summoned to the castle because the king wanted to prevent us, the player, from saving the game, <laughs> which is sort of meta. Because, like, that's the, the reason him being gone is... And it's the reason the player will probably notice, because you'll be like, oh, I'll go save my game, and he realize he's gone. So it's only an issue because of that mechanic. All right, let's start this cutscene. This is another, like... The king portraits are not impressive in this game. The shading is so flat, too. I feel like the other characters are a little better. He also just looks like a completely generic king character. I have a tactician we should consult. I promise they're not going to murder you. <laughs> oh, we're allowed to go in here now. Is there anything? Yes, a treasure! I love treasure. A wooden staff, again! This is not a, a- why- you know, this this king loves treasure, why is he hoarding all this useless shit? Like, oh, this wooden staff is really valuable, I gotta hide it in a treasure chest. <laughs> that's not- that's not a treasure, per se. <laughs> These guys hate us a lot. And this, of course, is Cain of Brunfaust. <laughs> Again, I just don't know why, like, this guy had no problem murdering our king and, like, uh, Vario, Seed of the Night, but apparently he just wants to put us in prison? <laughs> like, how best is this supposed to him? Just use your magic power that you killed everybody else with. <laughs> it's, the king of Alteron is starting to get the impression cooperating with this guy may not have been a very good idea. We also uh, kind of walk quite a long way to the prison here. And apparently, you know, they, they didn't want to, you know, they didn't want to have to clean multiple prison cells, so they just threw us all in the same cell, which naturally allows us to save our game. <laughs> I can still perform my duties. I'll make a record of your adventures on, I don't know, just in my head, I guess, since we don't have any paper. Yes, yes. You don't need no one cured. No one's waiting promoted. You're good. Um, how long has this been recording? Wow, an hour. Okay, well, since we've saved the game, actually, let's uh, save and quit. We have fought uh, another two battles, actually. So this was we did two battles. It's great. One of them was more boring than the other. Um, we've gotten a good chunk of the party up to level four, so we're progressing pretty well. And we've reached Alter on the next town and found that they've already surrendered to Runefest and decided to put us in prison. So naturally, we're going to have to kick Runefest out of this town and free everyone. And we also collected a whole lot of treasure, most of which was basically worthless. So the kingdom of Alteron is ruined by a guy who obsessively hides garbage around his castle. So it's not really surprising to me that they were very easily defeated by the bad guys. He's not. He doesn't seem to be particularly good at his job. <laughs> but next time, we're going to get our new party member, Chris, the next healer, who is better than low, so he's already becoming redundant, sadly, and uh, we're going to free Alteron from the clutches of Runefast, and hopefully get the entire party up to level 4. So that's all for now, until next time with the Shining Force. Bye-bye, Simone! I still don't know who you are or why you're in this game. <laughs>